Hey, welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett, and each and every week we design this show to help you create a better relationship with your money. As you hear me say all the time, uh, we have access to information galore nowadays, but it's really about finding the right information, and more importantly, how all that information applies to you. So with that, today on our show, I'm gonna ask a question, and this might you know, hit some people, maybe not, but maybe not everybody, but here's the question. Why are you still working? It's an interesting question, right? Because we think about retirement or you know, uh, becoming financially free, whether that's 35 or 65, it's up to you. But I wanna ask you, why are you still working? Now, some people have to, but there are plenty of people out there who might want to do some soul searching to determine how much or, or, or how really work fits into your ideal day. I wanna go through some questions, some categories that I've kind of broken down for you, along with some insights, not only from you know, my own experience, but also from a wonderful article I read. And I'm gonna go through that today here. But before we get started, make sure to smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. Before we get started, I have to share this, um, that, that this show is actually based on some conversations I feel like I've been having more frequently with my clients over the past few months. So I wanna share just an experience of some conversations I'm having with them around this notion. And they're at various different stages and ages, right? So this is not necessarily for those that are in their 50s and 60s when it comes to not working anymore, but it really has to do with some windfalls in some people's cases, some inheritance and in others people's cases, some debt payoffs, that all of a sudden they become more financially free. So it's just a good idea to kind of bring it up here. So I like what I like doing here on our show, right? But remember the title of this one, this show. The question I'm asking is, why are you still working? What I'm gonna go through here as, as, as in, through a design, if you will, is some categories of people, you and I, and how I think we as together would respond to that one simple question. So category number one, I wanna bring up, and, and this is just each of these categories, you know, you can help yourself to find which one you're in, right, is this person. I must keep working. Now, friends, I'm in this category. I have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. I feel like I'm in the prime of my career, and I also love what I do. So I'll get into that in a second, but the category for all of us here in this number one is I must keep working. So my only comment to this group, all right, in reality is we really wanna do a soul search here and make sure you find yourself fulfilled at work. Now, many people watching and listening right now might be rolling their eyes. I mean, look, you, you have dreams and I understand that, but it's important to make sure whatever you do, you do it for the greater good. That's actually biblical. So the reality is finding fulfillment doesn't necessarily mean self-fulfillment in your overall goal. I mean, that, that's always important, but seeing the bigger picture and enjoying the day in and day out and being grateful for certain things, whether it's a job, an occupation, or a role that you get to play in someone's life. And then, you know, that being said, contrast to, to that, right? You don't want to, it's rather than, you know, wasting away behind some desk thinking that, oh my gosh, you're built for greater things. And I'm not saying you are, or you aren't. I'm just making, you know, I just wanna make sure you ask yourself, okay, if you're in this category, this first category of I must be working, make sure you understand why. I mean, what's your purpose, right? I mean, it's important to ask that question of all assets of life. Now, category number two is a little bit deviated off of that. Uh, and, and it says, I probably should keep working now. Now in this group, I think there are individuals and couples uh, I would share who could find a way to retire now or actually find a way to become financially free. But right now, perhaps they're maybe in their early 50s, maybe even younger. It doesn't really matter the age, but maybe they have kids that are just being born or, or like, you know, like I'm in this camp right now. Or maybe there's kids that are just going through college. I mean, you could retire if you wanted to. Uh, you could become financially free, but it's more opportunistic and maybe better financially to keep working. So this is an important question to ask or maybe in this group, these people spend a ton of money, you know, on passions and thus they're, you know, maybe not quite there financially or, or, or there is just to, to, you know, too much risk for them uh, to maybe pull the plug today. So we, we run financial models for clients. We do financial planning for this reason, to make sure that you are content and then, you know, understanding what working for another five or 10 years looks like. And is it really gonna pay dividends? You wanna know that, right? So I think working with your financial advisor in this one is a really big deal. And, and, I'll, and I'll share this, the things in life are always easier when it's could you versus should you. Think about that. When you were flat broke at one point, we've all been there in our life, right? And your buddy says, hey, let's go to dinner. You say, no, it wasn't even a thought, right? I don't have the money, I'm not gonna go. It was a very simple answer. You didn't stress over it. Then all of a sudden you got a few you know, coins in your pocket. That same buddy asked you to go to dinner and you're like, well, I could. Now all of a sudden the anxiety and the stress and it's like, oh my gosh, should I be at home? I did just pay for groceries. Should I just go down this rabbit hole of anxiety? And it's like, it's crazy, right? So the second category is a tough one because you, you now went from the can you to the should you, right? 
and you potentially have the ability to, and it becomes almost more stressful. So I really stress, in a pun intended here, it's really important that you go seek with an, you know, seek counsel, work with an advisor to build out a financial plan. All right, category number three is the people out there that say this, I wanna keep working. Now, if you're in a great position financially, but are working because you love work, this is an important question to ask, right? That's where I am. I, you know, I'll be candid with you guys as I always will be, right? I've done everything I preach, so I feel like I'm in a good financial position, but I love what I do. I hope that for everybody, I really, I pray for that for everyone. But lots of times I see with our professional clients like doctors, lawyers, engineers, or business owners, they're working well into their 60s and 70s. Why? Because they love what they do. There is something they're getting from work that they either need or want, right? It could be power, it could be money, it could be fulfillment or a sense of being or purpose or things like that. But regardless, this category, I think, uh, you know, this group has no end in sight and might actually pass away at their desk. I mean, look, this is a possibility. And many of you listening to this are nodding your heads in agreement like, you know, I'm, by the way, I'm, which is great if you're in this camp, right? It's important to categorize yourself so you put out, you know, look at the other side of what you could be doing because I think it really matters for yourself to be at peace with whatever category that you're in. And again, I, I'm calling them categories, but I don't mean to like gloss over them, but it's the best way I can organize it for you guys, right? So category number four is this category. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid to be financially free or retired. Now I've been working with people for nearly 20 years uh, that might be getting paid a salary and, and you know, there are, I, I'm just ready to go to the other side. Now as a financial advisor, I see individuals like this all the time who believe it or not are actually afraid to retire. And I should share with you that if you're in that camp and you're thinking about it, you're probably feeling the same emotions that I deal with with my clients. It sounds really great when you're like 25, like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to not work anymore and be retired and do, yada, 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 right? But when it actually comes to, and it becomes a possibility, and you've been doing it, working for so long, or just being in something for many years, there's a little bit of fear, believe it or not, in that. And that's okay, that's what I wanna to hear to share here, right? You know, but we get hired as advisors to solve these kind of issues for this category, this category number four, uh, you know, I'm putting together of the afraid camp. And these people are afraid of not receiving a paycheck anymore, as they said, or really worry about how they're gonna turn their life investments or their savings, for example, into a consistent income or be able to sustain their entire life. I mean, they're asking themselves like, oh my gosh, what if the, what if the market has another 20% down year or something, or, or someone in the political realm gets elected that you don't like, right? This group in particular has a million reasons not to retire. But the question really is, or any of those reasons good. Now, category number five is this one. I don't know why I'm still working. <laughs> this is the last category I wanna bring up here, okay? And I kinda of wrote this down, I was looking at an article as well, and it was a good summary of my own thoughts and my own experience. But when asked why they're still working, I typically have my clients, they'll say something like this. I, I don't know, Brad, what else would I do? Or maybe even worse, I really don't have any hobbies, Brad, or, or passions, so I figured I might as well work. Look, I run into this group all the time with people. And it's one of those things I pray about all the time because you know, it, it takes some real pushing, I think, to convince them otherwise. But it's that kind of counsel, if you will, from an advisor that you're really looking for. I'm mean, not trying to make them go to do a decision they don't wanna do, but it's, it's educating them and showing them what they're not seeing. So to summarize here, as you're asking yourself this question of why you're still working, I appreciate you spending the time to understand which category you might feel you are in, but here's the fun part I wanna bring up, right? If work in any of these categories isn't part of your ideal week, as I stated in the onset of today's show, and you fall into maybe category three, four, or five that I mentioned, after some real soul searching, then remember the question for today's show is, then why are you still working? Now, if you're in those categories, right, optimizing your happiness and newsflash here, you're not getting any younger. <laughs> and as I always say, the greatest investment you're gonna make is in your own time. Because you have to remember, you can't get time back no matter how hard you try. I've tried, trust me. <laughs> it's up to you and only you to do this kind of soul searching. And once you do so, talk to your financial advisor. Remember, today's show, why are you still working? All right, so it's important to go through these questions. And by the way, if you're not in the camps three, four, and five, and you're in the camps one or two, find your path with your advisor to get to those ones where you have the option to retire. And you'll find yourself striving for more near-term goals that'll then be the greater good for your longer term goals. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that today. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a single episode. And always remember to make your money matter.